It's pretty much a given if you're buying a car, electric or otherwise, that was made in the last five to ten years, it probably has some form of telematics capability. Telematics allows you to remotely check on your car's health, lock or unlock the doors, start the vehicle to precondition it prior to departure, and if you're an EV driver, check on the state of charge and sometimes even start or stop charging. That same connection used for telematics is also often used to allow your car to get new features and bug fixes via over-the-air software updates, meaning less time at the dealership and more time to do other fun things like cooking or mountain biking or to be a giant fluffy animal. Because of all of that extra convenience and functionality that onboard telematics offers, many of us have grown to love and accept cars with an always-on internet connectivity, just as we've come to love the little electronic wonder pads most of us keep near or about our person 24-7. But as we've covered many times before on the channel, the more connected something is, the more likely it is that someone, somewhere, will figure out how to hack it. And that's just happened again with Kia's entire fleet of connected vehicles, including its EV models. Let's talk about it. If you're a Kia owner, EV or otherwise, that introduction might have got you a little worried and reaching for your electronics odds and sods box so you can fashion your very own Faraday cage for your car out of spare pieces of 14 gauge wire and a few odd relays. You all do have a spare odds and sods electronics box, right? But fear not, because the person who discovered this particular security flaw was the kind of white hat security export we at this channel love. They follow ethical practices. They discover flaws, work out exploits, document it, and in this case, told Kier about it so that it could patch it before the details of the exploit was made public. Which means if you're a Kia customer, the flaw has already been fixed and your car isn't, at the time of filming this video, at risk of this particular face-pouringly bad chink in Kia's cybersecurity armour. But we are still going to make a video about it because if it happened to Kia, it could happen to another automaker. Enter Sam Curry, a white hat cybersecurity expert who is no stranger to discovering and demonstrating flaws in the telematic systems of various mainstream automakers. Back in June, his team discovered a set of specific vulnerabilities in Kia's remote telematic systems that made it possible to not only remotely obtain vehicle information from Kia's dealer facing software systems but actively send commands to the majority of Kia vehicles made in the last few years using just the vehicle's license plate. Depending on the age of the vehicle, the team could then locate the vehicle, lock and unlock it, actively remote start, stop, activate horns or lights, and in the case of some models, even pull a remote camera feed from the vehicle. Regardless of whether the owner of the car had opted, by the way, to buy an active Kia Connect subscription. Because even if you had a Kia vehicle and you had opted not to take out a Kia telematic subscription, which is what many modern car owners do if they're worried about cybersecurity risks through telematics systems, this particular flaw was so egregious that you could gain access to a car that didn't have an active telematic subscription as long as you had the license plate number and therefore the VIN number. If it had a built-in modem and it could connect to a telematic system and it was made by Kia, this flaw was valid. Making use of the exploit, the team were able to also pull down any personal information associated with the car, such as your name, your phone number, your email address, 
and your physical address, meaning that there was potential for further social engineered hacks like phishing, scam emails or postal drops. With access to that information, it was also possible to add an invisible second user to the target vehicle's telematic system without the official owner's knowledge. What wasn't possible, mercifully, at least in this particular case, was physically driving the vehicle off. Although, to be honest, if you've got access to inside a vehicle, you are halfway to being able to hack into the car's CAN bus to try and work around any immobilizers present. Interestingly, though, the exploit wasn't carried out using the most common attack vector for telematic systems. Usually some bug in the API used to talk between the smartphone app that came with your car and the automaker's dedicated telematic servers. Nor was it a particular fault in the system used to talk between the automaker's servers and your vehicle. This one relied on multiple faults, issues that lined up to make what amounted to a perfect storm. At the heart of this exploit was a fault in the security of a dealer-specific online tool designed to allow dealers the ability to associate a brand new car they just sold with the customer's details. And if you've purchased a new car in recent years, you might have seen the dealership use such a system. The dealership enters your details, your VIN, and bam, your car is officially registered to you on the system, and then you can go ahead and sign up for your telematics. After examining the various responses that this web service gave to a legitimate dealership logging in and assigning details to a customer's car, Sam and his cohorts were able to figure out how Kia's backend enrolled, unenrolled and modified customers' records pertaining to their vehicles. And then the team was able to access that very same backend. Because the backend handled everything on a per-car basis, the security experts were able to use a car's VIN to generate an access token that then allowed them one-time access to modify Kia's internal systems with information about the vehicle. And I'm not going to go into great cryptological depth here because I'll link to the original blog post in the show notes, but the entire process, once they'd honed it, it just took four separate requests to the server to gain access. The first to generate a specific access token needed to get the vehicle's details. The second to fetch the victim's phone number and email address. The third to modify the owner's information to add the attacker's email to the system as a primary user. And then the final one to actually use that attacker's email as the vehicle's main owner, thus granting access to all of the telematics offered by the car while sidelining the official owner. To demonstrate the process further, the team of hackers built a new tool, they nicknamed it Kia Tool, that leveraged existing open access information pools like you would use to look up an insurance quote for your vehicle. This allowed them to look up a vehicle's VIN from its current license plate. And from there, the exploit was carried out, taking over telematics to grant access, gain details about the owner and physically interact with the target vehicle. Having discovered the exploit, Sam and his fellow security researchers did the right thing. They reached out to Kia on June 7th this year, telling the firm about the vulnerability. Three days later, Kia responded and Sam and his team sent off an email one day later on June 11th with further details of exactly how that particular exploit had been carried out. By the 14th of June, Kia reached out to the researchers officially, confirming that it was investigating the report. But then Sam and his team emailed Kia on the 18th of June, showing screenshots of the tool they had built to highlight the urgency of the need to fix this flaw. They then followed up two days later, showing further screenshots to detail how they'd used license plates to pull VIN numbers of victims' Kia's vehicles. And then, well, then things went quiet. Kia didn't respond to the security researchers for nearly a month, despite another email from Sam asking on August 12th for an update. It wasn't actually until August 14th that Kia confirmed it had remediated the vulnerability and it was performing testing 
And it wasn't until September 26, after Sam and the team confirmed through significant testing that the patch was in place and effectively blocking the exploit, that they decided to disclose the vulnerability publicly. By my calculations, that means that for more than two months, Kia knew about a vulnerability with its telematics system and for a significant portion of that period may not have actually patched it. And that is atrocious. I mean, kudos to Sam and co for doing the right thing and waiting before making this public. Kudos to Kia for eventually patching the system. But by now, I'm sure you're curious as to how this impacts you. And the good news is, if you are a Kia owner, you shouldn't be worried. The floor is gone. But in general, if you're someone who owns an EV or in fact any vehicle with a telematic system, it's worth remembering that any information your automaker has on you can, and very often will, leak out one way or another. There are mitigations you can use to try and keep your data safe, regularly changing your passwords and using a service that scans for your passwords and account leaks and having unique passwords for every single site you visit will in fact help. And of course, if you have a credit card on file that's tied to your telematics or EV charging account, even though I want to reiterate payment information wasn't involved in this specific exploit, it's always good practice to use a credit card that has specific limits set on just how much money that card will give out in a single transaction. Of course, one solution for this all, if you're really worried about it, is to rip out the telematics in your vehicle. Because as this exploit showed, even if you don't have a active telematics account, your vehicle can still sometimes be reached and compromised. However, and I really want to caution here, that kind of approach is not only often a little extreme, but it can often leave your vehicle non-functional in some way or another, and of course can prevent things like over-the-air updates. It may also make your vehicle less desirable on the used car market. Sadly, as is often the case, when an exploit like this is discovered, making a noise about it and joining with other owners to make your grievances felt to the automaker in question is a pretty good course of action. But to be clear, I'm not suggesting anyone here go to the extent of legal action, but I also wouldn't be surprised if someone somewhere decides that is, in fact, the next appropriate step. For what it's worth, however, I think my next step wouldn't be to try and shout at Kia per se, but to rather work with legislators to ensure that, in a digitally connected world, legislation is laid out to try and force automakers to be better about their digital security. Taking out things like removing a service as soon as an exploit is discovered. The sad part of a modern, convenient, connected world is, well, just like Thanos, security flaws are inevitable. The benefits for most of us outweigh the potential pitfalls. I use telematics most days and I love it. But just as automakers are dropping the ball on other tech-focused things, like software updates, we need tighter checks and balances to make sure that telematic systems are just as secure and just as protected as any other online service. And some of the flaws we've seen in the last year or so would suggest otherwise. Thanks for joining me today and if you've got some thoughts make sure you leave them in our Discord chat room, our Patreon page or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team and making sure that we can remain 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers that you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just over $10 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters. Alan Brim, Jim, Sarah Horlock, full name, Todd Johnson, Roderick, Stuart De Spain, Rupert Ronson, Larry Phoenix, Dala, Wendy Kelly Buddenbaum and Kay. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your moment of fame. 
If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll also find links below to make Ko-fi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have a good old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at, address also linked below. And of course, if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below. Don't forget that Halloween is coming and we've got some great designs for the season. We've also got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we also think this one is well worth a look. See you soon and as always, keep evolving!